what's up guys we're back again with a new deceptive sparky deck to blast through all of your opponents when opponents see rail ghost and goblins they'll think that only fast psycho decks and pekka will be possible and when unsuspecting opponents spam too much stuff into a sparky you'll sweep everything up and sweep up the game a lot of pros rely on this sparky deck because it's safe as well and when opponents spam in the other side your goblin giant can kite units directly into your sparky or you can use goblins and mini pekka for an efficient defense in the other lane and the electrifying offense in this deck is upgraded to the next degree. Because of the Goblin Giant, Royal Ghost, Rage, and Zap, you have infinite ways of removing bait cards. So if opponents fall for that trap, you'll snap their towers in two. It's time to shock all of our opponents and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's using Crayon Codes or Tag to make all of the higher for videos possible. All right, we got a game against Easy. Hopefully it's as easy as his name. So we're gonna go for a ghost at the start, given the perception we've got Pekka Bridge Bam, and then he's gonna be flabbergasted by the fact that we've got Sparky. He's gonna go Witch. Dude, why? Please tell me you have a deck that I can comprehend. Otherwise, it's gonna be really annoying. No, stop it! Mid-ladder players sometimes, man. The balloon plus witch card combination is relentless at mid-ladder. So these type of mid-ladder monster decks do get obliterated by rage because notice how all the skeletons just went pop. And then we kind of were popping the tower with the spear goblins. I love how they just like ninja their way around the log. And now he has to go for Electro Wizard, which is another arch nemesis for Sparky. So in this matchup, you guys might be wondering, how the heck am I supposed to counter balloon? Because look at my deck. I only have Phoenix to shoot up and then I have the goblin giant. We will show you the way. Generally, what I like to do is apply aggression so my opponent can't go in for balloons. Obviously, you do not cycle your Phoenix as long as they don't go in for the balloon. They go in for the balloon, then you go in for the Phoenix. You don't drop it otherwise. So, we will just continuously, casually cycle our ghosts directly into the skeletons to make them ghosts once again. The skeletons died, became ghosts, and now they got resurrected as skeletons. It's interesting how their life cycle just always continues. Also, why is the regular ghost like missing everything? How many shots did that thing just miss? That's ridiculous. You guys let me know down below in the comment section how often does your Royal Ghost miss skeletons from a graveyard, a skeleton army, or just any card in particular. I think it's one of the best cards in the game because it will stay alive at 1 HP and then, you know, force that extra elixir from your opponent in a situation that they wouldn't want to drop because obviously their tower can't see it. It's also one of the worst cards in the game because it literally misses everything. So it's either the best or the worst. There's no in between with that thing. He might go in for a Valkyrie. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to go Electro Wizard. So we're going to go in for a Rage. Hopefully we're able to hit the majority of the Skeletons and then have Raged Up Goblins on the tower. Oh, yo, we got a Valkyrie out of him. So I'm going to go last possible second, drop our Mini Pekka, and then go Goblin Giant at the river. I don't want to drop it too soon, but I also want to drop it a bit earlier so then we persuade our opponent to not go for a Balloon. Also, notice the placement of the Goblin Giant so the Mini Pekka does not endeavor ahead. Okay, so we're going to go for a Zap at the Pristine Moment so we can one-shot the Witch. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. We are steamrolling this man's tower. And as long as we defend the next Balloon that he's about to drop... Oh my gosh. Why? Why do you have Pekka to crush my Goblin Giant? My Shrek wanted to lead a happy life, man. I got to kill this, and then I win. I need to somehow shut down an Electro Wizard Pekka deck. I'm going to cycle my Phoenix early. I'm going to do the forbidden play. I made the right play. I knew he was going to go in for the balloon because he stacked up so much stuff on the same side. I figured it out. I cracked the code, guys, and I think we're fine. As you guys can see, Phoenix does wonderfully against Balloon. You just got to save it in your hand, and then, you know, there's no way that your opponent's able to do anything because the game gets out of hand for them to be able to break through. There's nothing they can do. That rail goes to Mini Pekka, slapped the three crown, and secured the dominant W. Super solid stuff. It's cool to see two Phoenixes flopping around on his three crown, just showing him that we own his territory. We're playing against someone 341 in the world. Top ladder player, here we come. You guys already know the deal. I want to go for goblins, and I want him to spam right into a mini P.E.K.K.A. so I can pulverize his tower. If we get any sort of elixir advantage, that's the vibe. Not happening. He's going to get the elixir advantage and go for a lava hound in the back. Bit of a risky play for us to go for goblin giant other side, but since I have zap, I'm not super scared of an inferno dragon. You know what? I can rage on this. He loses his bats. He definitely loses his tower. And then we have the phoenix and the old zap to stop the inferno dragon on the left-hand side if he decides to drop that. Dude, he's going to prevent the three crown instead. Let's go. Who's that Pokemon? Ooh, I think I know what this is. It's got to be a Lava Hound clone deck because he's got Lumberjack. Yeah, there it is. It's Not a fun matchup for us to play into most of the time, but we can still make it work if we play this well enough. All right, so we're going to let the Phoenix pop and then we can go for a zap if we need to, but I don't want to. Oh, I think I have to. Just to prevent him from three crowning because I think the damage will add up over time, right? We're playing against a top ladder savant 
and the guy is running a Lava Clone deck. We can't let him get enough damage on the three crowd because instead of making a beeline towards the right hand side, he's going to start dashing towards the left and we cannot let him three crowd me. So we're going to have his eyes on the right hand side. Nice stuff. We can go in for a Royal Ghost again and then we can follow up with the Goblin Giant. We're going to be holding our Rage because we expect him to go Skeleton Army exactly as expected. Oh, please. Let's go. That's very nice. The bats are going to be the only worry in the world right now. I don't want to let the Royal Ghost just die, but I have to. It's just one of those things where you're like, Royal Ghost, if you survive, you might be able to give us like two more taps on the tower, but I can't let that happen. If we Sparky, it's just too much Elixir and it will get distracted by skeleton armies and it will die to fly machines and get torn apart. So Sparky is kind of a dead card in this deck because if you drop it, you're probably going to be dead. We're going to go in for our mini Pekka here. He should lose his Lumberjack. And then I'm going to go for a Phoenix. A bit risky. I know. I was like... It's my only anti-air card, but I have to drop it. It's the only proper play that I have here, so then I can stack up multiple of them. I'm going to go in for a zap, and then I'm going to go Goblin Giant. The Goblin should be able to distract so the Phoenix doesn't take even a shred of damage, and then we can shred his tower with the Royal Ghost. Yo, this is a pristine rage. Hitting every one of his units, barely missing the King Tower, but I had to make sure that I hit as many things as possible. So, is the Phoenix going to lock onto the tower or nah? Dude, not even a single love tap. Come on now. I'm going to go Goblins. Maybe we go other side and switch it up and swerve him. I don't think I can. I'm going to go Phoenix. I'm going to go in for Goblin Giant again so we can go and kill the Skeletons. He knew I could go towards that side, so he split it up. He's a really smart player splitting up that Skeleton Army. I would have went towards the other side and taken out the second tower and then made sure that all of his units coming at me wouldn't be going towards the tower you want. I'm going to go Goblins. Doesn't seem like he has a good response to this. Let's go Mini Pekka and then Zap potentially. Yeah, we're going to Zap on all the Skeletons. We've got the Mini Pekka. Parade push towards the Three Crown. His Fly Machine's not going to lock on. It's going to lock on Goblins instead. Please, one more shot, one more shot, one more shot, one more shot. Yes! Clutch Three Crown against a top 300 player in the world. And that was so easy. He's sarcastically spamming the Sierra Elmo. He is so salty after that one. Whenever I run a dirty and disgusting deck, I never get salty if I lose because it's just karma. And that's a clean and pristine seven wins in a row. Let's keep it rolling. We are climbing up the grand challenges quick with this deck and we are speedily destroying everyone. This guy isn't going to be cycling anything at the start. So we're going to go and take matters into our own hands and cycle our goblins. So, this guy's gonna go for minions. I could zap those. I'm gonna wait the last possible second and just see if he's gonna drop anything else. He's not gonna get any damage with the minions, so it doesn't matter when I zap it. I'd rather zap it closer to my tower to prevent my opponent from dropping other cards. He waited with this Sparky, though. Oh, you scandalous sir. Fortunately for us, the Royal Ghost doesn't reveal itself until it blasts the Sparky, and then the Sparky's like, yo, you hurt me? I'm gonna give you a little bit more from where that came from. You could have zappies, interestingly enough. <laughs> not expected to have zappies with Sparky. <laughs> he really likes zapping things, I guess. We're gonna go for goblins here, and he should be able to lock onto those. Oh man, please, 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 let's go! I thought for sure that I was gonna get screwed and that the Zappies would finish off the Phoenix Egg and his Sparky would retarget onto mine, but it worked out beautifully. <laughs> I was like, please don't lose my win streak right now. We're doing so well. We're gonna go in for a Goblin Giant, and then I'm gonna follow up with a Zap. I could have went in for a Rage. I just want to instantly kill his stuff and just save our Rage for a bit later if I need it. Yeah, it's going to be nice to have the Rage against his mini Pekka, so my mini Pekka will fire faster now. I think that was the right decision. So I'm going to Rage right now. Please give me the trade that I'm looking for. Nice. So our mini Pekka survives. Not that big of a trade for us. Look at you. Not even conscious. And still determined to show the world what you can do. The mini Pekka's going to die to his tower anyway. I don't know why I was so gassed up about that. I was like, yo, my mini Pekka, it's going to be our hero. It's going to one-punch man his tower. And it really didn't work out as planned. He's going to spark you in the back, and now we don't have his app, so there's no great way for us to reset that. I think our best interest right now is to go in for a Phoenix in the air, because we don't care if the Phoenix is going to cycle out at him, because the Sparky can't shoot up. Come on, you sad Sparky, what you going to do now? So he's going to go Zappies. I guess they're not going to be so sad for long. All right, so we can go in for a Zap, and then we can go in for Goblins, and then we can go in for probably a Rage if we need it. Oh, we don't. Oh, we don't. Dude, we shredded that Sparky. <laughs> That's sick. We're going sicko mode out here. This might be good. If I go in for a Goblin Giant and show him how to actually bridge spam, if we defend first and then spam him afterward, he might be at his worst. I don't know if he can stop this. We have a mini Phoenix, a miniature little bird on his tower, and we're planting another zap on his face. Dude, this is nasty. How fair is it spamming Phoenixes as much as I am? I want to get the Phoenix resurrected back in his face. I'm just too much of a memer, guys. It wasn't the right decision. I was hoping it would go Goblin Giant directly into our Sparky. He didn't make the bad play there. We do have Zap. Hmm. Do I go Royal Ghost, Goblin Giant, and then 
that go back to the zap and then be able to reset his Sparky and then rage at my Sparky so I get a really good interaction. I think that's the vibe. Let's roll with it, baby. We're raging up our units instead of hitting his instead. Oh, was that dumb? Because I think I just pushed my Goblin Giant right into his Sparky. That might have been one of my dumbest decisions ever. But, you know, we're going to have to live with it or we're going to die with it. Which one will it be? We'll find out. Uh, all right, Goblin Giant's gonna die, so we don't have to worry about that. The Phoenix gets blasted back. It's fine. We go Ghost, and then we go Goblins, and we go Zap, and we shut down his Sparky. So we're gonna Zap here. We're gonna go Goblins again, and we're gonna rage it all up, and we're okay. Wow, that worked out really well. When there's double rages going on, you never know what's gonna happen, so you just gotta have to pray that the luck is on your side. Rail Ghost is gonna splash onto the tower too. Thank goodness it didn't end up getting revealed, because I think the tower would have been able to finish it off with the zap. Now we're just going to spam everything we have. So this is the part where you just release your skill, and you succumb to the inevitable will that you're going to take everything. So, yeah, we won the game. There wasn't a single thing he could do on defense. When you're up Elixir with a gigantic Goblin Giant push rolling at your opponent, they're going to be screaming that life isn't fair. We don't care, though, because now we're at 8-0 in a GC, and this is so easy. We got a game against Pentagon with a funky way of spelling it. First things first, we're going to go for Ghost in the back. Whenever I see Log, I know it's going to be a fast cycle deck. There aren't too many different decks in the game that have Log that are beatdown decks. It could be Royal Giant, though, because we just saw his Fisherman. So I guess that's the only deck that I could really think of with Log and Fisherman in the same deck that's beatdown. No Electro Giant deck ever has Log, at least from the decks that I've seen so far. I'm going to Sparky on the other side because I don't want to go same side as his Phoenix and his Fisherman and all his other stuff. I think it's a bit better for us to play this way. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. This is the worst card for us to play against in Clash Royale. Worse than Electro Wizard, worse than Royal Delivery, because you can, you know, find your way through those cards. Fortunately for us, if you guys didn't know, the second Sparky Shot will always end up hitting the Monk. It can only reflect back one Sparky Shot, and he didn't know that. <gasps> Wait, he dropped his Log, too. We can go for Goblins and then follow through with our Rage, because our Goblin Giant's on the tower. We need as much damage as possible. If you notice why I dropped my Goblins, it was really important for us to do that, because if you Fisherman he would go and pull the goblins instead of the goblin giant. So we seize the opportunity, and all we have to do is defend for the next minute and a half, which I think should be a secure defense. We're just going to consistently drop goblins off to the side, so when we go in for mini P.E.K.K.A. to counter his royal giant, he's just going to keep pulling the goblins instead of the mini P.E.K.K.A., while the mini P.E.K.K.A. has free reign to inflict some pain on the RG. So his offenses are going to be lackluster, and we'll walk away with an easy win. Oh, he's even going to fireball and leave the game. Let's go. This deck destroyed this man's morale, despite him having Monk with Royal Giant, one of the most feared decks in Clash Royale when you're running Sparky. You can still Mr. Monk the Monk, and the Monk can't stop you. Even though he's used to bouncing everything back, this guy most certainly did not bounce back in the game. All right, so getting to the game against Esteban. I went Royal Ghost on the same side, and we see an Inferno Dragon. It's got to be a Mega Knight deck, right? Just looking at this card, it's whenever we see Bandit with Inferno Dragon, it 9 times out of 10 is a Mega Knight deck. So when you're playing into Mega Knight, it's important to make sure that you go in for your Mini P.E.K.K.A. to pulverize the Mega Knight. Otherwise, you know, the Sparky is just going to die and it won't be able to break through the Mega Knight every single time. So, we're going to be able to kill the Inferno Dragon. I can go in for a Mini P.E.K.K.A. at the river if I wanted, but I'm glad I didn't because he's going to go in for a Prince. This is the strongest Mega Knight deck in the game, the one that he is currently playing. So we're going to try our absolute hardest to win this one. Unfortunately, I wasted a zap. I wanted to make sure that the prince didn't charge, but I forgot about the phoenix egg plopping down and making sure that we didn't have to do that because the prince ended up wasting its charge on the phoenix egg. Maybe it's not a waste. He kind of had to finish off the phoenix egg. <laughs> so he's scrambling himself in the back, dropping the mega knight, and then we can go for the sparky. So the best thing about this deck, the fact that you can pull your opponent's units if they spam on the other side directly into your sparky, so I can use the Goblin Giant if I need to. Otherwise, I just want to go for the Goblin Giant so the Mega Knight doesn't jump. And we make sure that it sits on our side of the map as we shut it down easily with our Goblin Giant, Tower, and Sparky. So we can raise this up if we wanted, but we've already got enough of a positive Elixir trade with the Goblin Giant that I don't necessarily feel like I need to. Instead, I'm going to go in for a Phoenix, and then I'm going to expect him to go in for a Prince, so we're in a Mini P.E.K.K.A. on top of the Prince, ideally. Oh, he went Electro Wizard? No way! He's going to have E-Wiz in this deck, too! A real challenge. I'm here for it, guys. i rather play against more difficult matchups. It makes me more happy to be able to beat those, if I can make it happen. So he's going to lose the Electro Wizard to our tower. It's not going to be that big of an issue. It should just get one little zap. It's done more damage on the left-hand side anyway. I'm going to go for Goblins when he goes Wall Breakers there. So we'll go in for Goblins when he Wall Breakers. Otherwise, we're ignoring it. We're just going to go Goblins when you drop them. Where are they, man? You know you want to. Don't ask me where I'm at, you know? 
I'm somewhere where, where you can't be. I guess he expects me to go goblins, and he doesn't want to go in for arrows for a negative trade. Smart sir. I appreciate that type of gameplay, bro. Not overcommitting, just taking the damage that you can get reliably. This guy is actually a really good Mega Knight player. Most people would overcommit and immediately lose there. I'm going to zap in three seconds. You just count to three, and then you zap to reset the Inferno Dragon every time. We're going to go in for a Rage, so then we can kill his Inferno Dragon. And we're going to go in for Goblins here, ideally, as well. Hopefully kill the Prince and keep our Royal Ghost alive. So, good stuff. Royal Ghost is going to force out a Bandit as well. Hmm... Do I just go mini Pekka with Goblin Giant and then zap on top of his aggressive Inferno Dragon? Yeah, we're fine here. That's not going to take my tower. This is fine. So it's going to barely not take my tower. And then we rage and we go and take his tower. Let's go. It's all calculated. Sometimes you just got to know the amount of damage that your cards can do. And then it will screw your opponents in the different situations that they're not expecting, right? So we're just consistently spamming more stuff at the river because we know, guaranteed, he doesn't have arrows in cycle. So since he doesn't have arrows in cycle, he can't kill my goblins. So we should be able to go and finish off his wall breakers very easily. So I'm going to go goblins in front, and then I can go in for a zap if I need to, which I probably do. He's not going to get back to arrows for refine, and we go for a rage, and we walk away the win. Super calculated stuff. Knowing that the minor wall breakers wasn't going to do 1,500 damage put us in a pristine position to go all in for the win. When you play a ton of different decks like me, you know the damage potential of each deck so you can make better informed decisions. Knowing my opponent was helpless with five less elixir there allowed me to steal the game with a speedy spam. I've won. Exactly as planned. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.